As a mixer and producer, I always love the sound of the vintage digital reverb units. And uh, I always had in my mind the goal of trying to achieve that sound that we all love. Okay, so we'll just start by playing some drums through the reverb. So I have the balance you knob between the early reflections, which I can change the type and size. And the reverb tail. And the dry wet knob, which applies for the whole unit. So this is just the effect and this is the dry signal. The reverb time control allows me to control the length of the reverb tail. And I can also change the build up time, meaning that at zero, the reverb will start immediately without building up. And as I move the knob, I'm basically controlling the attack of the reverb tail. And I then have the pre-delay control, which I can sync to the host tempo, which will allow me to keep the pre-delay in time with the session. I can then go to expand the plugin interface to reveal more detailed controls. So here I have the EQ section, which is basically a four band EQ controlling the coloration of the reverb. You'll notice that usually we want to filter quite a bit of the high frequencies, otherwise we get this sandy kind of sound. Which can sometimes be useful, but mostly is unwanted and can be easily filtered. However, if we want to achieve some interesting effect, more like a band pass reverb, we can use these controls very easily. Sometimes we want the reverb to be completely muffled, and we can achieve all that very easily with this EQ section. Moving to the early reflection section. So I'm now just going to set it to fully wet, listening only to the early reflections. Here I have the early reflection types and size. The early reflection is a very important part of the reverb because it kind of places the sound in space and allows the reverb tail to continue reverberating those early reflections. If I'm going to allow some of the dry signal through. Then you can hear that it instantly places the drums in a room and I can select the room type and size. And then I can gradually add the reverb tail and change the length accordingly to get something that sounds quite natural and convincing. 
on the early reflections I have a high frequency filter which I can change. So I can make them more dull. Or I can simulate quite a bright room. And this is quite important because it controls the characteristics of the room and the amount of high frequency reflections that we're going to hear. When I dial in the reverb tail, then immediately I'm in a quite a bright room. And then I can dial it back a little bit and lower the frequency cutoff for the early reflections. Now you can notice that the reverb tail is still flat, so I probably want to dial some of that back as well. I usually try to find a nice mid-range that works well with whatever I'm feeding through a reverb and boost that up a little bit because that gives it some character and some body. So you can then dial the whole thing back. So this is the dry signal. This is just with a little bit of reverb and early reflections. And it immediately makes it kind of big and nice and it really helps placing a specific track in a mix. So this is completely dry and this is with that room that I used on the drums. But I now, for piano, I want to make it a little bit longer. And you can hear that the early reflections are kind of smearing the piano attacks too much. So I'm going to choose a different type and maybe increase the size. So there's more space between the individual reflection so I can let the attacks play through kind of in a more clear manner. Then I'm going to add the tail. Now you can hear that the mid-range that I boosted for the drums doesn't really work here. So I'm going to look for something else and maybe even cut some of that high mid on the reverb. That's quite nice. Now I can make it longer. I can very easily change the shape of the tail. So if I wanted to reverberate more in the beginning, to create the illusion of a more dense reverb, which doesn't necessarily have to be that long. I can do that quite easily. Now, if I want to, again, leave more space for the piano attack, I can increase the build-up time. And again, that allows me to bring the whole thing down. So I don't have to really use that much of reverb to create the sense of space and to allow me to place this piano in the mix. Let's hear it on acoustic guitar. So now on something which is more tacky, you can hear that the build-up time effect is quite noticeable. So I want to dial that back down. I probably need something a lot shorter on this. And then I can change the X gain back to a more linear shape. And that sounds more like a room. Now I have quite a bit of EQ here, which I don't really need, so I can just grab all the controls and without just reset everything in one go. I want to listen to the early reflections 
and choose something which is more evenly spread and probably decrease the size. I can use the zoom control to see the individual reflections, but they are represented here anyway on this mini pick, which is uh, usually enough. I'm gonna go for something like that, which is quite... Then I can zoom back out and increase the level of the tail. Again, find a nice mid-range and probably take some of the high end down. And you can, you can see that by increasing that mid-range, not by much, the reverb becomes very prominent, so I can just dial the whole thing down. And then a very little amount of reverb makes a lot of difference. So this is the dry signal. It's kind of in your face and very dry, and just a bit. So this is not going to affect the headroom of the mix or anything like that. And again, with the pre-delay, I can determine, I can make it kind of rhythmic, or I have it, I can have it like coming in straight away, but increasing the build-up time makes it again very noticeable, which means I can dial it down even more. So there's very little reverb here, but still it makes a lot of difference. What we managed to do was to create a real-time FIR generator. By using this technology we managed to avoid um, the artifacts of recursive engines which means that the reverb is totally without any resonance, without this metallic comb filter kind of artifacts. This also allows us to filter the reverb over time in a way that is not possible on IIR-based um, engines. So I'm going to just take this drum loop. Here we have the damping envelope. I'm gonna reset it so it's flat. I'm just gonna give it a little bit more time. Get rid of the early reflections. Flatten the build-up time. So we have a linear reverb. Let me reset the EQ. Great. So what that means is that the high frequencies decay at the same time that the low frequencies decay. And I can change that by lowering the time that it takes for the high frequencies to decay above the crossover point. So I can play with that. Or I can make them stay longer than the low frequencies. And I can do the same with the low frequencies, so I can let them kind of reverberate for longer. And then I can create a kind of a band pass, which means that the frequencies between those two crossover points are going to decay at the time shown here. And the frequencies above are going to decay a lot sooner and the frequencies below are going to decay a lot sooner. Or I can do the other way around. So this is not EQing, 
now I can lower the overall time and I can, can create this kind of a fake loudness effect without using any cues at all because this is just controlling the timing of the reverb at different frequencies. So if I want to move to a more creative way of manipulating the frequency response over time, I can move to the envelope mode and here, and this is very graphic, so it just shows and it would sound exactly as you would expect. So this is the release time. And, and the release time is actually relative to the overall tail time. So as I move the reverb time control, the filter envelope section moves accordingly. Now I can set it to be a more resonant filter. Or I can change the filter type to high pass. Now I can also use the mix control to control the amount of filter modulation that I allow. So if I'm setting this to zero, I have a flat response, let's make it a little bit longer. But then I can dial in the amount of filtering. Let's decrease the, the Q factor a little bit. But that means that I have here basically two different types of reverb. One which decays in a linear way and one which is filtered out through time using a resonant filter. So when I use the mix control I can actually have the sound of two different reverbs at the same time. and I can make this longer. Now another mode I can use is the LFO mode. And here I set the highest frequency and the lowest frequency and the time. Now this is in sync so it, it will be quarter notes, eight notes and so forth or I can have it in Hertz so it's free. And then I'm gonna Put the mix to fully wet, dial the resonance a little bit back, and then I can create very interesting effect. Now you notice that even though the frequency of the LFO generator is not in sync necessarily with the drums, it still sounds in time and that's because the resonant filter modulation responds to the peaks of the source played which excite the reverb and in turn determine the, what we hear out of the modulated filter. So I can play a guitar, I can change the time of the LFO frequency generator. but still it will interact with the music played in a way that will always sound in time because the guitar kind of excitation works on the modulated filter in a way that sounds musical no matter what I do. Now I can flip the frequencies so I can make it go from down to up in frequency. Or I can use the high pass filter. With a lot of resonance, again, 
back down the mix control. So here I have a normal kind of linear reverb response and I can dial just a little bit of those modulated frequencies in. Let's hear it on the acoustic guitar. So I have an uncolored reverb, or I can dial the, I can dial a little bit of that animation, animated reverb, which works really well in the context of the mix. And then I can lose some of the high frequencies on the reverb altogether and bring in some mid-range. Or I can go back to the resonant filter envelope and play with the time. I can also play with the attack time. Let's hear it all the way on. So for, for vocals, we can create something which is very interesting, but we don't have to use it all the way up. We have, can just use some of it to create some animation. So we've been working on this reverb for the best part of three years now. We've made a lot of experiments and um, found the best way of implementing this method of creating a really, really smooth reverb, uh, which allows for a lot of control and very unique way of controlling the frequency response over time while implementing resonant filters. And then trying to still maintain this sound of the 80s and 90s digital reverb units that we all love. We wanted to bring back some of the characteristics of these units. And like I said before, these units are based on recursive signal reverberation, which creates some resonant effects. In order to achieve that, we implemented the output echoes. I'm going to show you what they sound like. So this is just a linear clean tail. And when I add the output echoes, I get this immediate increase in size, in depth. And you can hear if I allow the tone You can hear some of that resonance that really resembles those hardware units. And this is some of the technologies that we used in those units. They're implemented in a slightly different way here because the function within the signal path is different, but nevertheless they give that distinct sound. So for something that is very smooth, very clean, very linear, we can get something which has a little bit more depth in kind of a classic 80s way, I suppose. Now we can change the, the size of the output echoes and play with the tone. That works really well in conjunction with the high frequency filter that can be applied on the reverb. And we can emphasize it by finding the right frequency that will enhance this slightly metallic sound. <laughs> 
here on the global section, we introduced some of the processing that you could achieve on the hardware units. I used to distort the input of some very famous reverb unit in order to achieve that massive snare sound. And let's hear how that sounds. On a clap sound, I can really drive it. And I'm actually changing, because the input is so clipped, but you don't hear the distortion through the reverb because the reverb tail kind of smoothen, smoothens everything out. But it really creates a different tone. Yeah. So that's without. It's kind of nice and polite. I can give it a lot of attitude by using the drive. Speaking of snares and of 80s and all that, I have to go back and show how we can create this 80s snare sound very easily. By increasing the X gain, reducing the reverb time, and playing with the X time, I can create a non-lin or non-linear reverb play. And then I can just shorten the whole thing. Since the X gain can be actually higher on the second part of the tail than on the first, it can create almost like a reverse effect, but obviously I have the build-up time to help me achieve these kind of sounds. But if, even if, if I reset this whole thing and go back to a linear reverb, let's make it a little bit shorter, I can just reverse the whole thing very easily. When mixing, sometimes you feed uh, the reverb with some sources which are either quiet or not very transient. And you want to be able to check the reverb um, response. So here we added a button that triggers some noise in a, a very specific shape uh, in terms of its uh, amplitude over time. And this excites the reverb while still re maintaining the frequency response. So this helps to really tell what the reverb is like. We can check the early reflections and you can basically set up your whole unit very easily because if you're if you're playing I don't know a percussion loop through it sometimes you want to be able to just stop and listen to the actual reverb tape, which will reveal some details that may not be present in the source that you're playing, like on this classic guitar. If I stop and excite the reverb, I can actually tell immediately that it's probably too long, and then I shorten it. and it probably makes more sense like that. Also, I can determine the balance between the early reflections and the tail very easily because it's just very easy to hear it like that. <laughs> 
In terms of presets, we set out the goal to recreate the magic of as many vintage, legendary outboard units as we possibly could. It's not that we actually modeled those units like we do with uh, some other vintage hardware gear, AQs and compressors. It's more capturing the vibe, although I have to say that some of them sound very, very similar to the original. So we have here some of the most famous presets on the best hardware units. And what, and what really amazed us all is how versatile this reverb is, because it can go from one sound to a completely kind of different type of reverb, and then to a more, slightly more modern one. And obviously, this legendary sound of the early 80s unit. And the ambience program on this unit is something that works so well on everything that it's unbelievable. It has its magic.